Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Amuna Project. We're here at the Amuna Project, are continuing in our series of videos of education, information, inspiration, guidance, and uh, we're continuing in our sub-series of uh, videos with respect to the shofar. And it was Rav Sadia Gaon that came up with 10 allusions, and not illusions, allusions, with respect to the shofar. These are things the... Um, the, when you hear the blowing of shofar, it should remind you of it. Should uh, it should hint, point in these directions, and he set down ten. And um, these are symbolic allusions uh, with the mitzvah of the uh, shofar. Uh, one is Rosh Hashanah is Yom Haras Olam, um, Yom Harat Olam. This is the birthday of the world. It's creation, and at the same time, God created the world and became sovereign. It's uh, so when he became king of the world. Hence, the expression Melech Haolam, king of the universe. And it is customary uh, when a king is uh, appointed, anointed, um, during a coronation, that trumpets and uh, a shofar blasts, announce the coronation. So when we hear the shofar, it should remind us that uh, the Creator is also king and sovereign. The notes of the shofar, coronation, king. Speaking of kings, another reason. Um, just as a king has the power of life and death, the power uh, of giving amnesty is also in the king's um, uh, king's abilities, king's uh, responsibilities, the king's power. Uh, he may proclaim um, amnesty. Instead of punishing the evildoer, the wrongdoer, he forgives them. And uh, the shofar blasts say that if you wish to repent, you better do it now because later you don't have uh, a complaint that, you know, you weren't warned. So, again, the shofar blast tied to the king in the sense of, uh, of amnesty and also a warning for us to do tshuva because, you know, this is the kind of thing that, um, that we need to do now and don't complain later uh, if you're caught short. Uh, the third reason is the shofar should remind us of Har Sinai at uh, Mount Sinai. Uh, it says in the Torah, Exodus 19, 19, that the Jewish people standing at the foot of Mount Sinai heard great blasts of the shofar, and they kept getting louder and louder and louder. So when we hear the shofar, one of the things it should allude to, one of the things we should be reminded of, one of the things that it should touch within us is um, the sound of the shofar uh, at Har Sinai. Uh, the blast of uh, sorry, uh, Har Sinai. Also, number four, it reminds us of the admonitions of the prophets to do tshuva. Um, I'm going to quote from Ezekiel, the calls to repentance, Ezekiel 32, verses 2 and 3. When I bring a sword upon a land... A century, for example, blows the shofar and warns the people. So we should think of these prophecies of the shofar as warning the people to do tshuva. Um, again, this is from the prophets. Um, five, it says the building of the, uh, the blowing of the shofar should remind us of the rebuilding, may it come soon, uh, of the temple in Jerusalem, the Bezimigdash. The shofar should um, remind us to pray for the rebuilding of the destroyed Holy Temple uh, in Jerusalem. Um, the prophets like Jeremiah have said uh, you know, that, uh, that we should pray uh, for this constantly. Um, the quote from, uh, from Jeremiah uh, is, this is one is from Jeremiah 4, 19, 20, I shall not be silent, for the sound of the shofar have you heard. O my soul, the shout of war, destruction upon destruction has been proclaimed. So, 
um, Jeremiah, typical Jeremiah, uh, warning uh, for repentance. Number six, the shofar should remind us of Kedesitzak, the binding of Isaacs. As you recall, when Isaac is bound on the altar and Abraham has the knife in his hand and he's about to shecht, he's about to slaughter Isaac. Thank God, Baruch Hashem, an angel uh, stayed his hand. And also what happens, Abraham looks up and he sees a ram caught in the thickets by its horns, the ram's horn. So when you see and hear a ram's horn, one of the things you should be reminded of is the ram's horn at the Akedah at the binding, um, at the binding of Isaac. Um, the seventh one, the the sound of a shofar should inspire awe, fear, and trembling because Rosh Hashanah is the day of judgment. And just like in a any city uh, or colony in the old days, there were sentries. And when you're sitting in your tent, you're sitting in your hut, whatever, and you hear at 3 o'clock in the morning the, blow, the blowing of a shofar, it's rarely a good thing. It usually means you're about to be under attack or you are under attack and your life is in danger. Similarly, in Rosh Hashanah, the, uh, the Yom Hadin, the, the Day of Judgment, that should um, fill you with fear that you're about to be judged. Your, your, your veras, your sins are coming... Uh, forward and then you're going to be judged and that should cause you uh, a certain amount of concern and um, speaking of judgment number eight it uh, should remind us of the final day of judgment in the future when we're all uh, before uh, the creator and we're all finally being uh, being judged by the creator number nine is uh, we should yearn for the ingathering of the exiles from all over the earth, from all over the universe. Because who knows in the future where we will be, but uh, the Creator will gather us in. That uh, shofar blast should remind us that in the days of Mashiach, in the days of the Messiah, all the Jews will uh, return to the Holy Land, will return uh, to Israel. And on that day, a great shofar will be uh, blown, according to Isaiah 27. And finally, uh, number 10, the shofar should remind us of the Hiasamesim, the resurrection of the dead, which will happen with the sound of the shofar. You've heard uh, the saying, you know, loud enough to wake the dead, literally, the sound of the shofar will, um, will announce the resurrection uh, of the dead. Isaiah uh, in chapter 18 says, all inhabitants of the world and dwellers of the earth, those who are in the earth, you shall hear when the shofar is sounded. So that, that shofar, that final shofar, announces the uh, resurrection of the dead. So according to Rav Sadia Gaon, those are the ten illusions that should be going through our minds at Rosh Hashanah uh, when we hear uh, the, uh, the shofar. And also through the ten days, because on um, Rosh Hashanah, our fate is inscribed, it's written in the book, but it's not sealed until Yom Kippur. And Yom Kippur, that's when the fate for that year is done. Who lives, who dies, who will do well, who will not so do well, who's going to get married, who's going to get divorced, all that stuff. Um, so, as of the date of this recording, it is the day after, the second day of Rosh Hashanah, You've got a few more days, you got a week until uh, Yom Kippur, let us all do tshuva, let us all be the person that God wants us to be. Until next time, on behalf of the Imona Project, we're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Uh, a few more on the shofar. Uh, until next time, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.